It's Dr. Lori. I'm in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota at the Goodwill e-commerce. Behind the scenes, this is where all the jewelry is. So basically, it, these pieces are going to be listed for their e-commerce site. And I'm giving you this rare inside look at, of course, how this works with Goodwill. This particular piece, let's start right here. So this on this particular pad is what would be listed as a lot. So they've got, again, this nice amethyst colored stones, necklace, this one beautiful, and then you've got this piece, which is another long amethyst um, necklace with, again, the crystals here. This is a longer necklace. I don't really like when the necklaces have these beads at the end because they're just on a piece of rope. I don't know if you can see the piece of string, so it could break off. So that's in terms of quality, not the best of quality, but a nice looking piece. Then you've got some bracelets with a couple of amethyst stones here, these rounded beads. This is, of course, the bracelet, and the bracelet will you know, go up and down like that. So you can get your wrist in there. I couldn't get my wrist in there. <laughs> but that's a nice piece. And then this I really like. I really like the chunky weightiness of the faceted cut stones. And uh, again, that purple color. You have another one of the same type with these clasps. Um, this one, of course, with the seafoam green color stones, but with the clasp that comes off, and then you just hook it right back in, and then it pushes inside, goes inside of the actual piece, and stays together that way. That's a nice piece, too. Um, we've got a lot of some bracelets and some necklaces, the necklaces down here. You've got those stretch bracelets. And notice the color scheme, and here's another bracelet. They're all stretch bracelets, but notice the color scheme for the lot, because this is going to attract people who are trying to bid on the auction, um, or if they're doing a buy it now. But basically, you know, the purple and the, and the green are analogous colors, so they attract, again, people to the particular listing. So this is how they're doing the listings here. These are multicolored stones, so you've got some tiger's eye, and you've got some chalcedony, and you've got some quartz, and some agate. So that's really, that's a nice grouping. And the whole grouping together, if you added them all up, you're probably looking somewhere between 175 and 200 for all of the pieces here. Resellers might, you know, into sell one piece like that for 40 bucks. So that's what a lot of people do, or they're collecting it for their own collections. But so that would be sold in one lot. Um, then you come to this next group, and this next group has a theme. So the theme for this one, the way they decided to do this one was all crosses. So you had different types of crosses, three types of crosses, but they kept the set here together. So they didn't separate it out and just give you three necklaces of crosses. They made sure that the angel's wings cross, the pendant, the necklace, and of course the earrings are all together. These are crystals, they're not diamonds. Um, they've been tested. And basically the crystal pieces here, this whole set probably has a market value of about $65. And then you have this one. And again, none of them are, are in sterling silver. None of them are marked. They're all costume jewelry pieces. And both of these are plated. Only this particular cross has crystals on it. Um, all of these look like they're 16 inch, diminutive, small scale, um, small scale necklaces. I'm just going to double check and make sure that this isn't sterling silver. And it, oh, this was this is sterling silver, so this was missed because this particular piece actually has a 925 mark on it. It's a mark on the clasp. So I always tell you to look for the mark on the clasp. Um, this particular piece has the mark right on the clasp that says 925. I don't know if we'll be able to get it, but at that side of the clasp, right there, it says 925. Um, the chain is sterling silver, yet the pendant is not. So that's another thing that you want to be aware of when you're looking at these pieces. And sometimes the photography will show you that. So sometimes the photograph will actually show you that. So in this case, it was marked 925, but the pendant is not. So you've got some fine jewelry with some costume jewelry in that lot. So we found something a little bit unexpected there. Then you've got um, this whole area. So, you know, the whole piece, if, if this is going to come in at 75, these are probably... Now, this one is more like 60 for this chain, but the rest probably about, I would say, in that 150 range for all of it. So ni a nice group, a nice group as well. But you want to get your loop, and you want to be checking 
because you know you might be finding that diamond in the rough here. I always tell you the real bargains, if you have the right tools, the treasure hunting tools, you're going to find it. So, and then we've got some rings. So these are um, a lot of costume jewelry rings, and all of these costume jewelry. Some of them you can identify, of course. You know, a lot of sparkle here, but obviously that's um, again uh, faceted cut crystal. And then this one has a little bit of weight to it. And again, a lot of sparkle on that one. But none of these are actual diamonds, and they've been tested. This is a nice ring. And the thing about this ring is it's obviously copper. See how coppery color that is? You know, so it's trying to look like rose gold, but really it is copper. This one is also costume jewelry. So you're probably at 25, 25, 25, 25 for those pieces. This ring I liked. Um, I like the fact that it's quite small. I like the fact that it probably is um, like mother's rings, but this one is sort of more of a range of color of all the greens. Um, I thought that was a really nice looking setting. And you can see how it's open work on this side. I'm going to look in it and see if I, what I can find, if anything. And yeah, that's just brass. That's just brass and then overlaid. And then these stones are in fact similar to, uh, they're, they're a little bit glossy. These stones re are reminiscent of emeralds, but are not, in fact, gemstones. Um, these particular stones are not um, fine jewelry stones. This is a nice looking piece, but again, glass, trying to look like something else. And again, 25 or so for each one of these. This stone is fun, this is fun, but this, you know, you can find these in like, you know, the Walmarts of the world. Uh, a stone like this, trying to be a pink diamond. That was very popular in the early 2000s when Jennifer Lopez had her pink diamond. That was a big deal. So a lot of these fake rings were pink diamonds at that time. When she was, I think she was engaged to Ben Affleck. I think now she's married to Ben Affleck. Is that right? I got to get all this right. But, but she was the one who introduced the pink diamond. It was like this big deal about colored stones. And then um, another one like this. This one sort of has more of a masculine look to it. But these are usually mass produced in Asia, and you'll see these. So these are like the $10, $25 range stones here. Um, this ring looks a little bit better. It almost looks a little bit more like an actual man's ring. Um, but this particular ring is, again, costume as well. You can see the, um, the hematite pieces, and this is just black glass. And then these, <laughs> this, is, this is really a cocktail ring. <laughs> This is like, you know, you went on a cruise with Marilyn Monroe, <laughs> you know, and then, I don't know, Frank Sinatra. But that's a big, a big ring. That ring, I would say, could probably command about 30 bucks. That's a lot of fun. That's a fun ring right there. So that would be sold as a lot. So these would be sold as a lot. Um, this one, I always think when they do things like this, it's better because people could be fooled into believing that these are baguettes. They're very good Austrian crystals. They're sparkling. It's a nice setting, and it would look like Again, a ring, I don't have a good contrast because I have this glove on, but it would look like a, an eternity band ring the way it's set with all the prongs. The prongs are a good point. When you see a prong set ring, you can see a good idea of how nice these particular pieces look. Like To me, I, I think these two together look pretty good. Um, I think this one's kind of nice, sort of in, in the manner of pieces you might find at Brighton's. And uh, I do like this ring. I think that ring is really nice, especially the diminutive quality of it. A marquee cut stone. These are called marquee cuts. That marquee cut stone was very popular in the 1950s and 60s. Um, so those particular rings really look a little bit better quality. If you'll notice, they're missing a prong on this one. You see there should be a prong right there, and it's gone. So some of these you really have to look at closely um, because the missing prong is going to make that um, lower quality, and it's going to make that um, a greater possibility that the stone will get lost. It'll pop out and get lost. So, but that's going to be sold as a group of custom jewelry rings there. This is also a room, and see, you can see it's a theme. Here's the theme. The thing is hearts, <laughs> right? Love Diane and little heart necklaces, and, and here, of course, is some pink and red, and here's some earrings, and another heart piece. I think that possibly came off of a a purse, you know, or some other emblem. And this is plastic. You hear it? Plastic. And then um, this piece is nice. I think that piece is really pretty nice. I'm going to put this over here for a minute so we can move through. This piece is nice, you can tell from the back. So while it's crystals, you can see that that's a nice piece of silver. 
So that's a nice piece. Um, it's a little bit, it's a little bit um, short, though. It's a little bit short in terms of it. And, yeah, and it's not sterling, but the, the chain itself is kind of small. But I like this piece a lot. I'm going to put it right here so we can show you that. I like that piece because it really is in keeping with what we see today. Um, a lot of this is... Uh, some of them might be brand names, like here's a Napier piece. So there's a nice Napier piece of costume jewelry, and it's clearly marked on the back Napier. If I turn it around, I'll show you. You can see again the heart shape, and you can see right here where it says Napier, right down here at the bottom. So this little pin, a Napier pin like this alone, is about $25. So that's a nice piece that you might find in this lot of jewelry. Similarly, I would say that this piece is probably close to $30 just for that one necklace. And then you've got some hearts on this, on this nice little ring, all with crystals. This is lower in quality, and this is lower in quality. And here's the gold form of it, see? And a couple of things you want to look for. Let me put this in this, that down for a minute. What you want to look for is, of course, anytime it's open on one side. So now it, this could be all these little hearts on one side, and then you've got the crystals on the other side. Doesn't look like any of the crystals are missing, and uh, they put it onto this chain. I would say that's about thirty dollars for that little necklace. Um, I don't see the other. Oh, it's a pin. Okay, so that's a pendant, but that's pretty inexpensive costume jewelry piece. You know that one. Pretty inexpensive there. Um, if you see this, this is called guiloche. Guiloche is a French term for when you're making these types of designs in, of course, um, the red portion where you can sort of see through it that guiloche pieces. That's pretty, those are, those are a nice pair of earrings and those earrings probably date to about the 1980s. I would probably put $35 on that pair of earrings alone. These two, this pair of earrings, sorry, trying to get them to you. That pair, those pair of earrings, which are hearts with a little tiny piece of glass at the top. Those are cute, but not worth all that much. Um, what else? Oh, the lips are here too. So it's hearts and lips and some bows that are all, again, brooches. This one's nice. It has a frosted nature to it. This one's nice, but it's unmarked. You can see the frosted nature on both sides here and also on this side. So it's a ribbon that's in the shape of a heart. I would say value on that's about $15. And here's some hearts together. This was very popular the early 20th century, this idea of having the hearts come together. So um, a lot of the big name designers made these, like the Tiffany's and the Glant Van Cleef and Arpels. I'm trying to get it in my hand here for you. But then they did all these costume jewelry knockoffs. So these are all crystals here for that. Uh, so I would probably say that these are like 20 bucks for this necklace. It's a nice necklace, but it's copper and it's silver plated. And this one is... This looks like hematite with some gold plating. And these are fun. Those earrings are fun. <laughs> I like those. Those are kind of fun. But those are plated as well, but they're hearts. You know, and you've got the pair here and here. And what else have we got? So a lot of little pieces. And then you've got these. These are very nice crystals. Those are nice crystals. They're on a nice, they're nicely set in silver plated, but the crystals themselves sparkle a lot. They're nice and pink. They're a good color and they're consistent. You want the, them to be consistent when you see them. And they are a pair of earrings. And here is another pair here. Here's the other one too, the pair. So those are really nice. I would definitely say $40 for that pair. So, you know, a lot of folks are buying the whole group and then reselling them individually. Um, enamel pieces. These are nicely made. This goes with this. So I would prefer if they really just sold this as a group to me. See, this goes with this, and here's the other earring. So while, yes, costume jewelry, and they're all together, but wow, this is fun because if you get the necklace, you also get the earrings with the necklace and the pendant. So I think that's really a nice set, too. Um, the whole set together, I would probably say 30 and another 20. I'd probably say 50 to $55 for that whole set. But that's a nice set. And then the earrings open, you know, like this. And that goes through a pierced ear. And then it closes. 
So um, a safety clasp that you have on the earrings. But those are nice. And you could really wear them on the other side, too, just all the hearts. You could wear them that way, too. So th that's a deal. That's a, that's a pretty good deal. And then there are these, which are enamel. Put these right here in the center. That's a group. And maybe when they photograph them, they'll photograph that part to show everybody. Oh, look, you have a group here. You have that grouping for those. I like this. So there's a lot of, there's a lot of money in this particular setting, in this particular listing. Um, the pink, I like the pink. I love the double strand. I like the pearls. The luster's good. They are faux. They're not real pearls. But those are nice, too. And I would say definitely $65 to $70. That group is beautiful. And uh, the whole group, oh, you're definitely upwards of a couple hundred dollars on this. Those are nice. And then people would resell them individually. So that's the start of jewelry. This is a lot of jewelry to go through here. And of course, the e-commerce for Goodwill in Brooklyn Park, Minnesota. I'm Dr. Lori, stick with me. There's more to come.